remember. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Oh yes, my friends, how deep does the rabbit hole really go? Well, that's what we're here to discover. Dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ in music and the spoken word, you're watching Light Source Victory Television Live with me, your host, Pastor J. Sam McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next 25 minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. My friends, it's time for the most important and the fastest half hour of the day, Bible study. Now, of course, it is my Bible study time that I spend with you. I try and do it each and every Sunday through Thursday right here on AccessTV.org, of course, around the world on Facebook and many, many other mediums. So, my friends, grab your pencil, paper, your Bible, your telephone, text message, Google Circle, Twitter, whatever it is that you do in order to communicate to your friends and family that we are on the air and let them know it is time for Bible study. Stick and stay. Don't go anywhere, my friends. We will be right back. Oh, yes. Broadcasting live from the greatest city on earth, Hartford, Connecticut, New England's rising star. It's time for Light Source Victory Television Live. Glad you could join us. Get on the phone, call friends and family, send out text messages and all the all the things in order to uh, make sure that your friends and family know that we're here and uh, are, are willing, ready, and able to, uh, to join us, okay? <clears throat> I am excited about this because, of course, I love Bible study. I, I, there's just no other way to put it. I, I love Bible study. I'm always excited about the opportunity to uh, share the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God with you. So uh, we're here for a, a half hour. Our time is very, very short. So, uh, you know, we, we like to get right to it. Now, a couple words or a couple of um, rules, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, before we get started. We have Bible study. I don't review I pick up where I was when I was last with you. And so it is up to you to stay with us. Uh, if you want to get caught up, just go back to the beginning of whatever chapter that we happen to be reading from. Uh, if you want to watch and review, you can do so on your own. Log on to accesstv.org and uh, click on Light Source Ministries. And uh, you can, you know, get up to speed with all the Bible studies. Now, each Bible study is about 25 minutes or a half hour. In the course of the week, that's, you know, two and a half hours. In the course of two weeks, that's, that's you know, that's, that's five hours and so forth. So uh, the, further, the further behind you get, the more you have to get caught up. So how do you eliminate that? You watch every day. If you can't watch every day, watch every other day. That way you can stay pretty much caught up. We read about a half a chapter to a chapter a day in terms of uh, Bible study. Like I said, it is my Bible study time that I spend with you. This is how I have Bible study at the end of each day. I do it five days a week, Sunday through Thursday, and uh, I just take a half hour, read through the Word, and that's what I share with you, okay? So uh, with that, let's get started on your screen, the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting Word of the Most High God. <clears throat> there it is. Okay, Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of the Jewish nation. What were his experiences concerning this question of being saved by faith? Romans chapter 4, verse 1. On this side of your television screen or your viewing screen, whatever it is that you watch us on, uh, 
you have um, the uh, New Living Translation. On this side of the split screen, you have the King James Version. We have the King James Version for those of you who, like my mentor, used to tell me if it isn't in the King James, Brother Stan, it isn't in the Word of God. So read it out of the King James. That's what he used to tell me. What can I say? All right, so we put both of them. I like the King James, but when it comes to trying to uh, make it more plainer, more plainer, quote unquote, more plainer, then Romans uh, uh, 4.1 uh, is much easier to understand when you read it out of uh, the New Living Translation. Okay, so let us continue reading out of the New Living Translation, Romans chapter 4, verse 1. Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of the Jewish nation. What were his experiences concerning this question of being saved by faith? Was it because of his good deeds that God accepted him? If so, he would have had something to boast about. But, God, from, but from God's point of view, Abraham had no basis at all for pride. For the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God and so God declared him to be righteous. Okay, Abraham had faith in God, therefore Abraham was declared righteous. All right, so faith is, is the answer, faith is the key here. And of course, that's what we're establishing as we read through this, okay? When people work, their wages are not a gift. Workers earn what they receive, all right? I mean, you go to work, right? At, at the end of the work week when your boss gives you your check, he's, he, that's not a gift. I mean, you know, you say thank you because he is, you know, giving you the check. I mean, out of courtesy, but you've, you've done the work. And nor does your boss really need to say thank you for job well done. You're being compensated to do a good job. Anything less than that would be, you know, would be silly. But, you know, we get caught up into the social norms, this, that, and the other thing. It's good to say thank you. He says thank you. But at the end of the day, you earned your pay. So it's just not a gift that you got paid at the end of the week. All right. Verse 5. But people are declared righteous. Verse 5 at the top of your screen. People are declared righteous because of their faith, not because of their work. King David spoke of this, describing the happiness of an undeserved sinner who is declared to be righteous. Oh, what joy for those disobedience. For, oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose sins is no longer counted against them by the Lord. Amen to that. Now, is this blessing only for the Jews or is it for the Gentiles as well or too, as it says? Well, what about Abraham? We have been saying he was declared righteous by God's by God because of his what? Because of his faith. But how did his faith help him? Was he declared righteous only after he had been circumcised or was it before he was circumcised? The answer is God accepted him first and then he was circumcised. The circumcision ceremony was a sign that Abraham already had faith and that God had already accepted him and declared him to be righteous even before he was circumcised. So Abraham is the spiritual father of those who have faith but have not been circumcised. They are made right with God by faith. And Abraham is also the spiritual father of those who have been circumcised. But only if they have the same kind of faith Abraham had before he was circumcised. So you see here, faith is, 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 is essential. Faith is the key. 
All right, without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. I mean, you can have a form of godliness, but the form of godliness is not godliness. The Bible talks about a form of godliness, but the denying the power thereof. You know, in the time in which we live here, 2012, you know, it's nothing new under the sun. But in this particular uh, age in which we live, there's all kinds of substitutions for faith. All right. The deification of love, the deification of family, the deification of self, the deification of all kinds of things, the deification of government, all right? But, but, but there is but one God, and there shall be no other God before him. Uh, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, and render unto God what, what belongs to God. Are you willing to submit to God's will? Are you willing to submit to thus saith the Lord? Are you willing to do the things that are pleasing in his sight? which demonstrate that you have a relationship with him, which demonstrate that you truly have faith. Okay, now faith, we understand, because the Bible tells us so. In Hebrews, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We also understand that, 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 that for what one hopes for, one works toward. Faith without what? Works is dead. If there's no outward manifestation of the inward faith you say you have, then you don't have real, honest, and true faith. Okay? You can't be full of faith in Christ and be scared. Be fearful. Expect damnation, condemnation, and doom. There is nothing to be fearful of if Christ be the center of your life, if Christ be the foundation. Though you be in the midst of the fiery furnace, so what? The expectation is one of deliverance. The expectation is that the Lord will keep his word. So if God has promised, faithful is he who has promised. You have nothing to fear. So don't allow fear to rise up. Don't allow fear to, to gain a foothold. All right? And Abraham is also verse 12 and abraham is also the spiritual father of those who have been circumcised but only if they have the same kind of faith abraham had before he was circumcised verse 13 top of your screen you're watching life source victory television live we're reading out of romans chapter 4 verse 13. it is clear then that god promise that god's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was not based on obedience to God's law, but on the new relationship with God that comes by what? Faith. So if, so if you claim that God's promise is for those who obey God's law and think you are good enough in God's sight, then you are saying that faith is useless. And in that case, the promise is also meaningless. But the law brings punishment to those who try to obey it. Verse 15, Romans chapter 4. The law brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. Verse 15 out of the King James Version on this side of your viewing screen. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. All right. If there is no law, the law cannot be broken. But the law is established for one purpose only, to condemn that's why there's a law. Even when our state and federal legislative bodies or whatever legislative body uh, it is, uh, wherever you may live, maybe you live under a, under a, under a, uh, a monarch uh, or a, a, a dictator, you know, where the dictator uh, uh, makes the rules at, at, at will and at whim, you know, the, the the temperature is 70 above, then the dictator is in a good mood, and therefore he could waive a rule or create a new rule, whatever the case is. But, but those rules are made to condemn. All right? We have laws. Our state legislature here in the state of Connecticut, we just had elections in the United States of America, and so uh, there are new lawmakers, and the lawmakers make the rules. Well... We make a rule so that we can condemn those who violate the rule. There aren't rules made 
in areas where we don't want to hold people accountable for particular actions to the degree that there are some actions that some find in violation of the word but socially are um, uh, uh, that people want uh, that uh, that people would like uh, to have in a social realm acceptable. Now let's you know this, for the sake of discussion, let's take gay marriage. All right. Well, the Bible I believe is quite clear. Now I have friends I and mean, I have clergymen friends too that uh, are are not necessarily in agreement with me. But I think the word is, is pretty clear. But, but we're not here to debate the issue. I'm simply suggesting that if the word of God says that this is something that is not correct, then it isn't correct. However, if there are man-made laws on the books that say that same-sex marriage is wrong, then the only way to not be condemned by that rule is to have a new rule that says it is okay see generally speaking people don't want to feel condemnation they don't want to feel uh, as though they are under penalty or judgment for any human behavior all right i don't care whether it's adultery whether it's lying stealing cheating backbiting making copies illegally at work we all sin the bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says that the worst and the most egregious thing that you could do is lie. The Bible says God hates liars, okay? And people lie regularly all the time. I know lots of lying church folk, all right? So we're not going to get into the external comparison trap of one sin versus another. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why we don't do pet peeve sins here. Sin is sin. And so if you break the law in one area, you're guilty of breaking all of the law because the law is like a weak link in a chain. You may not break link 55. You may bring, break link 120. But it doesn't matter what link breaks when you're being suspended from the ceiling by what you believe is secure chain. Because once the chain breaks, you fall to your doom. So here you are being, being, being suspended from the ceiling by a chain over spikes and flame. Now, you don't want any of the links to break. Oh, well, you know, 45 of the links broke, but the 45th link wasn't secure. That, that doesn't work. Same thing with, for the law. So the law is what condemns you. Verse 16. So, verse 16 at the top of your screen, there we go. So that's why faith is the key. God's promise is given to us as a free gift. And we are certain to receive it. Whether or not we follow Jewish customs, if we have faith like Abraham's, for faith, excuse me, for Abraham is the father of all who what? believe or all who fave that is why scriptures that is what scriptures mean uh, when God told him quote I have made you the father of many nations end quote this happened because Abraham believed in God who uh, brings the dead back to life and who brings into existence what did not exist before when God promised Abraham that he would become the father of many nations, Abraham believed him. Abraham faithed in the word of God. God speaks and not a thing becomes a thing. So if he who speaks and not a thing becomes a thing, if God tells you that X, Y, and Z will happen, then rest assured X, Y, and Z will happen. I often get a kick out of, out of people when they say, well, you know, Brother Stan, or they say Pastor Stan, or whatever title people like to place upon me. I just like my name, Stan. But nonetheless, uh, I, 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 it's, it's, it's always curious when people will call me for some sort of, you know, um, counseling or something along that line. They'll say, well, you know, Pastor, um, God said that I should X, Y, and Z, and 
Yeah, I just don't know what to do. What do you think I should do? I don't have an opinion at this point. You know, at, at this point, you, you've removed me, most certainly, from any kind of opinion other than the obvious. If God told, if you, if, if you believe God told you to do something, then I am never, ever going to tell you to do opposite of what you believe God said. It just, it's just not going to come from me because, you know, I don't know what God told you to say. He, 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 he clearly believed that, that, that his telling you was sufficient for you to move and, and, and be motivated. So, so why would I tell you anything other than that? And I won't even entertain the debate. Well, God would never tell you to do X, Y, and Z. Because right? I'm not the orator for God. I don't speak for God. I, I, I can read his word. I know what the Lord moves me to do. I know what the voice of the Lord tells me. And I know what God has told me to do in the past. And, and, and so for me, it's a matter of I, sh I shall be obedient because thus saith, thus, thus saith the Lord, okay? And outcome is irrelevant. I, I'm never concerned with the outcome being somehow uh, perceived to be a, a positive one of my external comparison traps. Uh, the only outcome that's positive when it comes to doing what God said is, is that of, of being obedient. So you always need to be obedient when the Lord speaks to you and tells you to do something all right well Abraham believed God Abraham was older than old and 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 God told him he's going to have a son so so Abraham believed God all right Abraham believed him God had also said your descendants will be as numerous as the stars even though such a promise seemed utterly impossible all right God loves to work in the realm of impossible verse 19 abraham's faith did not weaken even though he knew he was too old to be the father excuse me to be a father at the age of 100 and that sarah his wife had uh, never been able to have children abraham never wavered in believing god's promise in fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was absolutely convinced that God was able to do anything he promised. Verse 22 at the top of your screen, Romans chapter 4. And because of Abraham's faith, God declared him to be righteous. Now, this wonderful truth that God declared him to be righteous wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was for us as well, assuring us that God will also declare us to be righteous if we believe in God, who brought Jesus our Lord back from the dead. He was a hundred, excuse me, he was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised from the dead to make us right with God, okay? So the whole issue around faith is one that, look, if you believe God, if you, if you put your faith and trust in God, then you can have hope beyond hope because your faith is not built and designed on the things that you see. Your hope is not built and designed on the acquisition of material things that you can work and earn, that you work and deserve to get as a reward for your effort and work, okay? But rather on that which has not yet been obtained. That's why you have hope. That's why they call it hope. You don't hope for something that you already have. You hope for salvation with a certain expectation that you will receive that which you hoped for. We have modern day uh, you know, charlatans that turn that hope that you have in Christ into some sort of, uh, you know, genie in a bottle that somehow will manifest for you whatever your heart's desire is in terms of material things. Now, some count gain as godliness, but the scriptures make it quite clear that gain has nothing to do with godliness. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Faith, the heroes of faith, we'll get to eventually in, in Hebrews, some died not having attained the promise. Does that make God's promise void? Absolutely not. If God said it, then you can rest assured of it. 
right? And that's not a pie in the sky attitude that 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 somehow says that um, you know you you you're you're foolish because because you have faith in God's promise and and the integrity of His word. All right, verse one, top of your screen, Romans chapter five. Now we're getting to the, the, the what I like in terms of, of the good part. I mean, it's all good, but. But, but I just love Romans chapter 5. You know, you can't just jump into Romans 5. You, you, have, to, you have to, like, get there from, from Romans 1, 1, and then you, you, you get to this place here because, of course, the foundation for this, the first four chapters, all right? And so, and so once you get laid a foundation of the first four chapters, then you can, then you can get here uh, to Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, since we have been made right, in God's sight by faith, we have what? Peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Verse 1 out of the King James, therefore being justified by what? Faith. We are justified by faith. We are made, uh, we, are, we, are, we are put in a right state of being because of our faith in God and the promise of salvation which is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wherefore, being justified by faith, we have peace. We, have, we are at one with he whom we were separated from because of our sin. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the vehicle by which we obtain that faith is Jesus, all right? Because of his atoning work, because of what he has done, uh, we now have a uh, uh, right standing uh, with the Lord, all right, because of God's mercy and because of his love, all right, because of his grace. Grace is defined as that which God may be free to do or indeed what he is free to do on behalf of Christ after the Christ has paid the price. Now, in order to be gracious, you've got to have something to be gracious with. Before God could be gracious, there had to be a means by which he could extend the grace to you. Well, the grace is accomplished through what Christ has done on the cross. Because of Christ's obedience, because of the blood shed for the remission of our sins, that act allows God to be gracious. And so the love is the essential key. And then the mercy. Now, the mercy is a very specific type of love. Mercy is the, the, is, is the type of love that's determined by the object upon whom said love is poured out. Okay? Uh, example would be uh, you want to see a sky fall. Hint. You want to see sky, I just have, I've been busy and uh, had been occupation, or, uh, obligations and therefore I, I couldn't go to the opening of Skyfall. So that's another subject for another day. You want to see Skyfall and, and, and the movie costs $10 and you have eight. So you are short the $2 necessary to come up, you know, to, to get you inside the movie there. Now another person only has, a, has, has, has one cent. Now, he is short $9.99. The other guy is short $2. Now, Mercy says, well, I will give him the $9.99, and I will give the other guy the $2. Now, what, what, what some may say, well, that's not fair. If you're going to give him $9.99, shouldn't you give the other guy $9.99? Well, first, I'm the one being gracious, so it's, 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 it's cool that I give them whatever I decide. Okay. They had a need. The need was met by my free gift of $9.99 and by $2. And so his lack is what determines the necessary relief that need to be provided to remove the lack that he is suffering. That's what God does. Each of us are in a place where we need something from the Lord. <laughs> we each need something from the Lord. So God meets us at our need. That's the mercy. Okay, motivated by his love toward us, God is merciful. He provides for us through Christ the gift of salvation because of the blood shed on Calvary's cross. All right, my friends, Unfortunately, as the case may be, 
our time together is ended. It goes by that week. So that's why we uh, encourage you to take a 30-minute good news break each and every day. Whatever time it is that you watch us, we're live Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right here, accesstv.org, okay? Google Hangout, you can watch us live there as well, all right? And uh, you can um, uh, get, get caught up. It, it goes by very quickly. If you're going to listen to some news, you may as well listen to the good news. Take a good news break each and every evening before you go to bed. Now, maybe you watch us on the, uh, on the demand side or on repeat or whatever the case is, but you want to tune in every day and stay caught up, all right? Stay caught up. This is where we are when we will be together tomorrow. When we come back, we will be at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. All right, that's it. That's it. If you love the Lord, give me a call. If you're watching this, wherever you're watching this, get on the phone. Just, 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 just call and say Jesus is Lord. Then hang up. It's just that simple. That's all you gotta do. If I don't answer the phone, leave a message saying Jesus is Lord, and then hang up the phone. Now, my my answer, my message on the phone is lengthy, but wait for it to go off and then simply say Jesus is Lord okay the number will be up at the end of the uh, scene so give us a call say Jesus Lord and hang up that's how that's what we call the offering here we you can't send me money you send me money I send it back to you we don't receive money for the ministry over the airway here all right that's me God put that on my heart. That's I can't speak for other ministries and other evangelical operations, but ours in the last 20 years plus has never solicited funds over the air for his blessing. Given me, I can't charge anyone for. That's just me. All right. But what we can do is have you call because there needs to be an exchange for the value of the word. The exchange here is the phone call that says Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you all. Keep you strong in the faith. Remember, when it's all said and done, the only thing you need to know is this fact, and that is, of course, Jesus Christ say and change his lives. Won't you call on his name today? Allow him Lord of your life. If you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you have an obligation to tell others about the saving grace of Christ in your life. Go out and tell them. Be a light unto them. How shall they hear without a preacher? You're that preacher. God's called you to do just that. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.